This is nine mil. This is 10 mil. This is four inch. This is six inch. This is what I tell people is nine inch. Welcome back to the channel, Ozers. Backdoor coming here with a 10 millimeter 1911, six inch barrel. This thing is a beauty. I just picked this up, uh, bought it off somebody who fired 50 rounds through it. And this is my first 10 millimeter and my first six inch long slide. A 1911 and um, this one's made by para ordinance i believe and you guys please help me out in the comment section i believe this is made by para ordinance after they were sold to remington you guys can correct me if i'm wrong i don't know much about para ordinance other than they used to be canadian i believe they were sold and then sold again to remington then they went under um there's very little information on the internet about this one. I, I can't find too much. Every time I Google it, I just see, you know, some kind of reviews, but not much about as the company goes, um, other than I, I believe now they're bankrupt. So if you guys know anything about it, let me know. But I just wanted to show you this again, um, mainly because this is my first 10 millimeter handgun and I just wanted to give you some insight into how it works. First time ever trying 10 mil. Do you record, you record everything, Dave? Yeah, right now. That's nice for the first time, Dave. Yeah, first time. So as you can see, those were my first shots ever with a 10 millimeter. It was a little disappointing because the very first mag that I seeded, this magazine here, comes with it. Um, the rounds didn't go in. And it was a little disappointing because I thought, Okay, I probably bought a lemon. There's a reason the guy sold it, uh, especially because I got a pretty good deal on it. So I tried again and everything was fine. So I did about 80 to 90 rounds and I had a couple of issues as you could see in the videos. Let's see if this mag jams again. But for the most part, it was all right. It was feeding pretty good. I'm going to say it was more of a magazine issue because it was just this magazine. Uh, I'm going to give it a little bit more of a break-in period and see if it's just a follower. Um, I could source these followers for like 11 bucks from Trip. So I believe Trip is a pretty good manufacturer. So I'll give that a try if the problems hold up. But as far as reliability goes, it was, it was good. Um, we did have one stove pipe. But again, I'm gonna chalk that up to the magazine and we'll go from there once I have a better, bigger sample. Um, the 10 millimeter round, I was expecting a little bit more kick.
and I'm not sure if it's because this is a six inch or if it's because the spring, because you can see this thing has a really tough spring in there. So I'd have to play around with it a bit more, but as, as I said, firing my first time ever a 10 millimeter, I was expecting it to have a little bit more kick. Um, to be honest, I would say that this probably didn't even kick as much as my 45 1911 with a five inch barrel. So uh, as far as that goes, you know, we'll see. I'm gonna try to get my hands on some hotter loads. Now, the reason I'm doing this video is, want to show it to you, but more importantly, just to, just to demonstrate that I'm a little underwhelmed by the fit and finish of the pair ordinance uh, 1911. It's got front serrations here and they feel a little rough and there's a couple of spots, especially when you take the slide off where you could feel the burrs. And it was a little disappointing because, I mean, this is supposed to be a $1,700, $1,800 gun when they were brand new. And to take the slide off to have burrs was a little disappointing. And secondly, uh, let's see if I could do this on camera real quick. The other thing that I was a little disappointed at is just how easy this comes apart. Look at that. This is a brand new gun with only 80, 90 rounds through it. Well, sorry, plus his 50, 130 rounds. And it comes apart so easy. And, um, you know, I've had Smith & Wesson Performance Centers that I've taken apart where I've had to mallet them to get them back in because they're so tight. I've had my 1911 Taurus, which, you know, I paid seven, eight, no, I think I paid 900 for that, but I overpaid. And that one was harder to take apart. It just feels like these tolerances are really loose. And, you know, that could be, I mean, for me personally, I think that's a good thing because, you know, the looser, the, the more reliable it's going to be. It's going to be less susceptible to dirt and jams, uh, at least from my understanding. But it was a little disappointing because I was expecting it to be a bit tighter, a bit better made. And then the other thing I didn't like is the fact that... Um, I'm not going to show it, uh, well, maybe I'll show, try to show it to you from the other side, but there's no feed ramp. Um, this feed ramp is kind of, I don't know if you can see it. There's no real feed ramp to the barrel, and I'm, wor I'm worried that that might be the reason it's causing the jams. So, uh, like I said, just a little underwhelmed by that. I'm going to pause it and put this back together because I know I won't be able to do it on camera. Well, that actually went in pretty easy. I was... Uh, I was going to remove the the buffer and take the spring out and and try to do it but it actually went in pretty easy so again just another testament to to how loose it really is and again i i mean comment below guys i don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing the one thing i will say is it does have a few nice touches it's got a, adjustable sights fiber optic front skeletonized hammer skeletonized trigger adjustable trigger uh i measured with my little wheeler this cheap little wheeler thing and i'm averaging let's see with uh, five samples i'm averaging 3.475 pounds um on the trigger pull so it's a nice trigger uh very light very crisp uh you know very 1911 ish oh so hard and the one thing i noticed though shooting and i don't know if you could see it there i'll, I'll try to show it again but you'll see in the videos i'll try to roll in I did have a few false positives on the reset. So you'll see me, you know, kind of doing one of those because I thought the trigger resetted, but it didn't. And um, you'll see it here. It's, and I'm gonna play around with this little screw in there because maybe it's just too loose. I was shooting it just as I got it. So who knows what the guy before me did, but watch the reset. I don't know if you could see, but it comes out a bit and it's a little spongy and then it catches. And it's longer than, than on my other 1911s, and it's not as positive feeling. So again, I'm going to play with that little tiny screw in there and see if that helps. Um, but, you know, 3.47 pounds on a trigger pull, you know, from a you know relatively budget 1911 is, is very, very good in my opinion, I think. So can't complain there. Uh, again, just a few things that I had issue with is the, the burrs on the inside. And just the fact that it seems a little loose, this trigger or this beaver tail safety is a little spongy and listen to how loud that is. I don't know. My other guns aren't like that. My other 1911s. So 
it does have the ambi safety i upgraded the grips i put these blue vz grips on i think it comes with um, the exact same grips just in black uh, so it comes with vz grips so you know all in all not too bad i'm gonna have to give it a few more range trips to see what i what i ultimately think of it but right out the bat uh, initial impressions are pretty good you know i'm not going to complain especially for what i paid um the one thing i will say is this i believe they call it an ion bond finish i'm a little eh, i'm not i'm not 100 percent sold on it it looks good like right out the bat but then as you get closer to it it's very i don't know if it's just the way the right light reflects it but you can see that it it's um uh, I don't know it's not as true and dark as as i'd like and it's not consistent like you know it looks dark here but then you'll have a just the way the light's reflecting off it or, or what um so anyways we'll see i'm gonna polish the oh here's what i was referring to so it's hard to see but the little feed ramp in there and again you'll probably see it better when i polish it where the the barrel the feed ramp of the barrel because it's a ramped barrel meets the actual magazine it's it's a little notchy there's a notch so i would have liked to see that a bit smoothened out and i'm going to try to do that with my polishing kit but i'll give you a better update once i get a few more rounds through it but if you have any questions let me know if you want me see see anything uh, specific about the gun let me know and i'll do it in my follow-up video thanks for watching guys